Bert likes to ring that buzzer, I guess. He tells me I'm late. It's good evening. It's good to see everyone. Glad you're here. I've just got just a few announcements. Uh, well, one repeat uh, from Sunday. Uh, James Camp, Bob Bell's brother-in-law, is in the VA hospital with uh, pneumonia and lung cancer. We want to remember him and the family. Um, new one. Those in the youth group who are going into the 7th through the 12th grade are invited to a back-to-school cookout and swim party Saturday, August the 13th, from 6 to 8 in the evening at uh, Kyle and Kelly's home. So August the 13th from six, at 6 o'clock, swim party for the, those young people going into the 7th through the 12th grade. Also, this is uh, AT, ATU's uh, or Tech's move-in weekend is this weekend. And the young adult Bible class begins Sunday, August the 14th in room 9 for college age and up. So, yes, they get fired up for another academic school year. Excellent. Uh, Rusty's got our song service this evening, and Anthony has our Devo. Is that on? Thanking you for your many blessings, Lord. We thank you for health, life, and strength, 
for our group that meets here in your church across the whole world. And Father, as we study your word tonight, help us to open our hearts and our minds to your word that we might be able to spread the good news of Christ to those that are less fortunate than we are that doesn't know this good news. And Lord, as we uh, continue with this prayer this afternoon, we pray if we have one in our congregation that hasn't put on Christ, that they might seriously consider that before it's eternally too late. Thank you for your great love. Thank you for Jesus coming and fulfilling the plan that you had uh, set out for him to do, and he done it so willingly. Thank you again for all of your many blessings, Lord, and it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, is this still on? Okay. I am still not where I feel like I can try to climb that podium. So I will speak from down here if that is all right. Uh, I had a lesson that I wanted to talk to us about tonight. It's something that has occurred to me a couple of three times. But uh, when everything was getting down to the nitty gritty and uh, things were about to lead up immediately to Christ's crucifixion. Some things happened that are worth our attention. And if you would, turn with me please. Now, Jesus' triumphal entry had just taken place. People had laid palm branches and their coats in the road, and everybody was really pleased to see him and were accepting him as a conquering hero. Now, the crowd, this is the uh, 17th verse, chapter of John. At first his disciples did not understand all this. Uh, Jesus had uh, they had been talking about Jesus being the king. And he explained to them that that wasn't the case. So only after Jesus was glorified that they did they realize that these things had been written about him and that they had done these things to him. The 19th, 17th verse. Now the crowd that was with him, when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead, continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard that he had given this miraculous sign, went out to meet him. Now this 19th verse is pretty important. So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. And they soon made up their mind to do something about it. Now at this time, several people were coming in who hadn't been around before because uh, <laughs> Jesus was an extremely important person at this time. Everybody knew about him. Uh, only people that were living under a rock had not heard about Jesus and what he could do and how he had fulfilled all of the specifics that were to be looked for in the Messiah. But in the 20th verse, we see this. Now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the feast. They came to Philip, who was from Beth Bethes Beth Bethsidia in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew, and Andrew and Philip together went to tell Jesus. Now that is a Still a very important question. Have you ever had anybody ask you to show them Jesus? Can you? How can you? 
Two ways from what I read from the Word. Number one is that I must pattern my life so completely after Christ that if they see the way I act, they've seen Jesus. Now, that's kind of a scary equation there. Everybody's watching us all the time. And it is our duty. It is what we must do to show the world Jesus. Now, there's another way, of course, to point out the scriptures that are the guidance for the way we live that will show them how they too can become uh, a reflection of Jesus. It's an important thing. It requires all of our attention and our real focus. Now they, people followed Jesus around. Many followed him for the reason that uh, they saw the miracles. Many wanted to be healed. Many really thought this was the Messiah. And then there were others who followed him to try to catch him in an error. In this set of circumstances, Jesus was nearing the end of his life and he was telling people, now his disciples didn't really understand him yet, but he was telling people that it was time for him to leave. So, this evening, uh, prepare yourself. If someone asks you to show them Jesus, or if you see an opportunity to do that, live your life in such a way that it will be a visual representation and know the word to the point that you can illuminate the scriptures that will tell them what they need to know. If there are those among us this evening who need to put on Christ in baptism or any other thing that this congregation can help you with, will you come while together and stand and sing? I think Jesus
God in nature. Does it not? In his handiwork. Well, just look and see if you can see God in that picture. Check test. Got it. Thank you so much. But, you know, we, we take so much for granted about our Lord and Savior. I see him more and more. It made me want to learn about his spirit having a relationship with my spirit. And that's why I wanted to do this class. If you remember last week, we talked a few minutes about all the, the things that's going on in our country as well as the world. And, and I don't know about you, but if you remember, we, we, we said there's a lot of people in our country now who openly ridicule Jesus Christ. They, they hate him openly. And I think that's a change. Used to, if someone mocked Jesus, they would be shamed by their peers. They would be shamed. They would be ashamed to say those things that they say openly now. And it got me thinking also about the spirit and when I'm out on the water or when I'm on the mountains or, or other places, uh, I want to know that I am in the presence of God. And I do believe that nature allows us to take a quiet moment and commune with God. I truly do. I believe that. And so... In addition to knowing the signs of the end times, last week we talked about Matthew chapter 24 up to about verse 14. Well, we know that's the destruction of Jerusalem, but we can gain some insight into how God operates in the world. He said there would be signs. And he also said in, what is it, verse 36 of that chapter, maybe? Somebody find that and read that chapter in Matthew 24. Read that verse, I mean. Who knows when Jesus will return? Only God the Father. We can just take that to the bank. Now, you see that picture? To me, maybe not to you, but to me, that picture represents so many things. Number one, it's truth to me. It's truth. Nature is always true whether it's a storm or whether it's a beautiful scene. It's always true. And the scriptures that we're going to look at and, and study about how to be led by the Spirit, if we become good at, now listen to that, if we become good at getting led by the Spirit, it will bring us into all truth. And you want to go to heaven? You want to be a Christian? Then you have to love the truth. It's a requirement that you love the truth because if you do love the truth, how will you behave yourself? You'll keep digging in it. You'll keep going back to it. You'll find ways and reasons, just like I did, just to meditate upon God 
and to think about his truth. So last week we said Jesus might come any moment and that Satan is busy and he seems to me like he's getting busier. More people are shacking up than I ever knew about in my whole lifetime before. It's happening on your street. It's happening in my family. More people are disrespecting the rule of law in my country when the policeman stops a criminal now. Does the criminal obey the commands of the officer? How do they get by with it? Well, let me ask this question. Do they get by with it? A lot of times they do. Many times they do. So, you see, Satan seems to me like he's speeding up. I think he's, he knows, well, let me ask. He don't know when Christ is coming back either, does he? Because only the Father knows. But just like we know, all the signs are there that we're in the last days and have been since the last scenes of the Bible. So our job is just to be ready. You're right. Thank you, Anthony, for that. Because there is no doubt that we're in the last days, even though we just read we don't know exactly when it is. We also read last week. We read something else that gives us a clue, though. It tells us some things that we can know and watch for. And that would be the mockers of Jesus Christ and his followers, which includes you. That is in itself is a sign of the end time. It is a sign when people openly mock God. That's why I wanted to do the study about getting better at myself mostly, and maybe you have issues with it as well, being led by the Spirit. If you can do that really well, where are you going to be when the last day comes? You're going to be okay. If you can do that really well, okay? Now, would anybody in here be brave enough? Watch it. This is going to hurt. You tell me how good you are at being led by the Spirit today. How good are you at it? What percentage of the time does your spirit control your body? On what percentage of the time do you allow your body to control your spirit? There's three parts of you, right? There's the body, there's a soul, and there's a spirit. I got a question for you. Can you be led by the Spirit without being a Christian? Can you be led by the Spirit without being a Christian? Say it loud. I don't hear good. Whose Spirit is that you receive at baptism? That's God's spirit. You already had a spirit. Go ahead. Says what? Could be. Okay, when do you receive God's spirit that works in conjunction with your spirit 
to lead you. At baptism. Okay. Okay. We want, to, we want to know how to be led by the Spirit, and we want to be sure whose Spirit we're talking about here. In a moment, we're going to let you share some of the scriptures that you brought about leading the Spirit. But uh, let me let me let me just suggest one other thing here before we do that. Uh, if I can get down here to it, I want to share this with you. Okay. Matthew 24 at verse 14 there, if you look at it, it says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. Why? 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 What does it say? For a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. What's the purpose of the scriptures, the Bible? What? I didn't hear you. To teach us God's will. To teach us who God is. Now, I want to serve who? More than anything else when I'm born and when I begin to know I'm alive. Who do I want to serve? Myself more than any, anyone else. Now, I've got my body, I've got my soul, and I've got my spirit. And those are tools. Which one is most likely going to be the easiest one to follow? The body. Why is that? Brother Dan and I had a conversation some time ago and he said something really profound to me. I've never forgot it. We were talking in a class about temptation and why people enjoy becoming intoxicated Let's just for a moment talk about intoxication. What happens when a person gets intoxicated? Totally. You're drunk, okay? What happens? Why does people want to do that? What? That's right. You're getting really close to what he said. Well, the scriptures are going to tell us tonight some of them that we're going to read. It's going to say that your body is in conflict with your spirit when you're not intoxicated. 
When you're intoxicated, I submit to you that that's no longer true. Which part is in charge? Dan, Dan said it so well. He said it this way. I said, well, Dan, what is drunkenness? What, what's going on when someone gets drunk? He says, Jim, all drunkenness does, it gives your body authority over your spirit. The rest of the time, your spirit's in charge. And it has to give permission to your body to go and do those things that you're tempted to do. So if you get led by the spirit, your spirit is going to get to kind of run a little bit of interference on your body, is it not? Well, let's look at some things. You got your Bible. Let's turn to this chapter, uh, and then we're going to get to your scriptures. Second Thessalonians chapter two, and I tried to read this last week, but I messed that up. We're going to try it again. We'll read down to verse twelve at least. We may go further. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering, gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled either by spirit or by word or by letter as if from us as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. Could that be a sign? Could that be a sign? And the man of sin is revealed. Could that be a sign? The son of perdition who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he sits as God in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time, for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. I think he's talking about the Antichrist there. You may tell me. And then... The lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive, watch this, what is it they did not receive? The love of truth that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie. I don't know what a delusion is. This one comes from who? Rusty may have a point. When he sends them a strong delusion, what happens to them? It allows their hearts to depart. They can't get back. That they all, verse 12, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Let's turn to Galatians 5.
Well, let's read down to, I think, verse 16. What's that? What chapter are we in in Galatians? Galatians chapter 5, please. And I think this was yours, wasn't it, Joanne? Wasn't this your favorite one of the scriptures that we got? We're going to read down to about verse 18. I don't think we need to read all these. I'm trying to see. Let me. Let's go to. Let's just start about. Well, let's read them all. Starting one. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. I, indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. And I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the whole law. You have become estranged from Christ. You, have, you who attempt to be justified by the law, you have fallen from grace. For we, through the Spirit, eagerly wait for the hope of the righteousness by faith. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything, but faith working through love. You ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This Persuasion does not come from him who calls you. A little leaven levels, leavens the whole lump. I have confidence in you, in the Lord, that you will have no other mind, but he who troubles you shall bear his judgment, whoever he is. And I, brethren, if I still preach circumcision, why do I still suffer persecution? Then the offenses of the cross has ceased. I could wish that those who trouble you would even cut themselves off. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. I say then... Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things you wish. Uh, how do you settle this conflict? I say then, verse 16, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit. Somebody explain that. What does that mean? Yeah, yeah, please do. We might as well just break it open right now because I want everybody to read one of their verses that they brought. Wow, it's great. Did you find when you were looking up these scriptures about being led by the Spirit, did you find some connections and things you understood? And would you mind sharing your one or two of your verses? Anybody? Raise your hand and let's just read them. Right now is a good time.
Go ahead. I have another one. Go ahead. <laughs> kind of goes along with what Can y'all hear him? It kind of goes along with what Rusty was saying a while ago. Because believe it or not, way back in Zechariah 4 6, an angel of the Lord talks to the prophet Zechariah. And he says in, in 4 6, so he said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. So, you've got to go in the direction of the spirit of the Father. Okay. Somebody else? Terry? Powerful. We need to get better at this stuff. I believe. I do. Somebody else. Re- read a verse. Please. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead and read those. That's verse 16 or 17 or 18. Where are you at there? Uh, 19. 19, okay, go. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Somebody show me what that looks like when you walk in the Spirit. Somebody go with it. Help him, Luke. Okay, someone else. Philippians 2, about the middle of verse 12 of the following. Uh, <clears throat> Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Do all things without grumbling or disputing, so <clears throat> you may be blameless and innocent children of God without Whom you shine as lights in the world. 
What does that verse mean? What about it? But you have to strive. You have to strive. You have to pay attention and focus on it. You have to look for it. We need to get better at doing that. We know about it, but do we know how to do it? Are we making it happen? Somebody else got one? If you're led by the Spirit? Well, if you want to turn over to Romans. Daily. Daily. To do it. It's something we do every day to stay on that path. And it's, it's like you said, we have to strive to do it. So, you know, almost get off on a tangent here and, and it doesn't sound right. Once you get baptized on that path, you've got to plan. No. A lot of other people say that. No. We don't, anybody in here feel that way? That if you or led by the Spirit and got baptized and received Christ's Spirit that you got it made? That's right. That's right. It does happen, yeah. <clears throat> It's that conflict, I do believe, Chad, between the body and the temptations that it presents to us and the spirit. And if we're not staying connected to God and if we're not in his word, which is where his spirit is and, and where I believe that we have to depend on him. Oh, it's lots of things. Before we, I don't know what time we quit exactly when the bell will ring, but I, I want to get to one more scripture, and that is Romans chapter 8 at verse 14. Let's all turn there. Romans chapter 8 at verse 14, please. This is where I want to be. 
as Chad said, as others, as Mike has said, as others, I might can do it for a while, but if I don't stay hooked up and the way the world is going now, the temptations can overwhelm me that's, that's here. And uh, I, I worry about being led by the Spirit in an adequate manner. Let's read Romans chapter 8 at verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. To me, that says it all. Go ahead. Which part of me died in that verse? My soul, my soul, my body, or my spirit? Which part of me died? The flesh did. The flesh, it's like, is that a literal statement that it's like your flesh died? If you accept Christ, it is no longer who that lives, but Christ lives in me. Romans chapter 6 at verse 7 says, For he who has died has been freed from sin. When you are baptized, what are you actually doing? You're I think if you watch the news on television, you can become frustrated. You can become doubtful that God is, His presence is even here. You can if you don't stay connected to the scriptures. That's my belief. Okay, somebody else. Exactly. We have to love the truth more than the world. We have to love the truth. It tells us in our, in our lesson tonight that we do have to love the truth the last days scoffers will come scoffing and following their own evil desires. They will say, where is these promises that God has made? He's, he's not coming or he hasn't come in thousands of years is what they'll say. And they will destroy faith in a lot of people if, if they're not following 
Christ and being led by the Spirit. I do believe that they fall away. I know some people who I know for a fact believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. And they have been baptized into Him and they have given their life to Him and they're no longer in His presence. They have abandoned His way, His work. Well, what happened to them? What happened to them with the relationship to God's spirit and their own spirit? That's it. Well said, Rusty. Second Timothy chapter four, verse three to five says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap, upon, heap up for themselves teachers and they will turn their ears away from the truth. From day one. That's true. Thank you. Hard to do. Hard. Last scripture I guess we got time for tonight is is First Timothy chapter four at verse one says this. Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons. So God's spirit, your spirit, the demon spirits, we need to stay in God's word to keep our faith alive in him or someone like Satan who is Cunning may take it away from us. It can happen. And, and there are those among us who will fulfill this prophecy. Christians today, unbelievers tomorrow, they will say the name of Jesus today, but reject him tomorrow. God forbid. God forbid. Thank you all so much for your participation. It's a great class. I appreciate it.